Hello everyone, this is Festina. And in this video, we are gonna talk all about environments. For that, let's get started with the Power Apps Maker portal. We are right over here in make.powerapps.com, which is the maker portal. And in the top hand right corner, you could see something called as environment. Clicking on that will show us the default environment and any other environments to which we have access to. And to understand environments in detail, I have created a visual representation for you. An environment is actually a space or a logical container for storing, managing and sharing your assets. And by assets, I mean your apps, flows, chatbots, connections, gateways, and so on. Let's take a quick look at the Power Apps Maker Portal once again. Here, we are on the default environment. On the left pane, we could see what all it contains. It contains apps, dataverse tables, flows, solutions. Clicking on more will show you what other possible assets that it could contain. Could have chatbots, websites, cards, connections, and so on. All of this is actually inside this environment. And I would like to talk a little about the default environment. So Power Apps creates a default environment for every tenant. And any user who signs up for Power Apps is automatically added to the environment maker role of this default environment. And they can start building apps in the default environment. But it is not really recommended for production. And it is generally recommended that we rename this environment to personal productivity. Let's take a quick look at the admin portal wherein we can rename it. Let's go to environments. In here, I have my default environment. I'm gonna open that and click on edit. And here we are just gonna rename that to personal productivity. And back in the Power Apps Maker portal, we can see that the name has been changed to personal productivity. Let us take a look at how we can go ahead and create an environment. Currently, we are on the Power Platform Admin Center, which is admin.powerplatform.microsoft.com. And on the top hand right side, we see an option called try the new admin center. Let's go ahead and try that. This is how the new admin center looks like. And on the left pane, clicking on the manage option gives us environments. Let's click on environments. And here we can see the default environment, which is already available. Now let's go ahead and create a new environment. Click on new and give in a meaningful name. Let's choose Fest Dev. And I don't want to make this a managed environment. If at all you have groups, like um, sometimes admins create different domains or different business units or groups wherein they can group the different environments together they will add the group here for us it's going to be none and you can also choose the region uh, whichever is local to you and i'm just leaving it to be india default and uh, our environment type is going to be developer all right so this comes along with a dataverse data store let's go and click on next the language is English and the currency is INR and I don't want to deploy sample apps and data. Now I'm going to click on save. All right, so new environment festive is preparing. It can be used once ready. All right, here we go. Now our new environment has been created. Again, let's go to the Power Apps Maker portal and do a quick refresh. And let's click on environments on the top right. Right here, I could see the new environment that has been created for us. Now, this is going to be all empty because we are yet to start with development in here. 
An environment allows you to create a separate space for a specific set of users, wherein they can create their apps, workflows, and every other resource possible within the Power Platform environment. For an example, let's say the marketing team has a separate environment for creating automated campaigns. Same way, the HR team has another environment for managing recruitment workflows. Every team has exactly what they need with no interference from others. Hence, it allows your work to be organized. Another huge benefit of environments is the application lifecycle management. Imagine a support team which is building a customer feedback app. They initially start in a development environment, experimenting, testing ideas without impacting anyone else. Once ready, the app moves to the staging environment where they ensure that it works perfectly in a control setting. And finally, the polished app is deployed to the production environment where end users can interact with it securely. Environments also allow administrators to configure the data loss prevention policies by which they can configure the business connectors and non-business connectors. This allows to reduce the risk of users unintentionally exposing organizational data. Now, let us take a look at the different types of environments. Trial environment is actually a temporary environment which is used for evaluation purpose or some kind of proof of concepts. They expire typically after 30 days and are limited to one per user. And the next one we have is the developer environment. These are created by users who have the developer plan license. It is available as long as you are actively using the Power Apps developer plan. This comes along with the Dataverse database and is intended only for use by the owner. And next on, we have the production environment. This is intended to be used for live, stable, enterprise-grade applications. This includes Dataverse database by default. And the last one is sandbox environment. This is pretty much your playground for development and testing. This environment can be converted to be a production environment and vice versa. And this also offers features like copy and reset without affecting anything about the prod environment. The next thing we will talk about is environment strategy. Environment strategy is pretty much a plan as in how you are planning to create, manage and organize your environment in the organization. And here I have certain examples of how different strategies could be. The first one is environment segmentation based on geography. Let's say your organization has different global branches, like you have a branch in India, you have one in US and you have one in West Europe. In that case, you may create environments separately for every geographic location, one for India, one for US, one for West Europe. And uh, one important thing to note here is whenever you are creating an environment, you will be given an option to choose a geographic location. So that is very important because all the resources inside your environment, starting from your apps to chatbots to flows, everything is actually bound to the data centers in that geographic location. The second strategy is environment segmentation based on divisions or business units. Your organization may divide the environments based on the different business units that you have. And it's always a great idea because they get your separate workspaces for development and productivity. Moving on to the next one. This is actually a mix and match of segmentation based on business units and application lifecycle management. Every department is again subdivided into the different stages of the lifecycle management. So we will get a separate environment for dev, one for staging and one for prod. It is always a great idea to have a really good naming convention for the environments so that later on when you are checking, you will get a good idea on which environments were created for which purpose. These are all just few examples of getting to understand how strategies could look like for organizations. 
And that's it about the environment strategy. If you enjoyed this video, do like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and thank you so much for your time.